Over two years, I have been living in China now, and I have to say, it is not what I expected at all. Before I arrived here, I had an image of China that was dirty, polluted, grey, unfriendly and authoritarian. I cannot begin to tell you how wrong I was. Two years is a bit of a sweet spot because it's enough time to begin to have an understanding of the country, but also short enough that I can still remember my feelings of the country before I arrived, and I can still see everything with a fresh set of eyes now that I'm here. During this time, my home country, the UK, it seems to have gone backwards. I hate to say it, I really do, but whilst the politicians and newspapers over there are sitting in their glass houses throwing stones at China, I am over here with my boots on the ground witnessing the reality for myself. In this video, I want to touch on a few points where I believe the UK is failing and how it differs from China in that respect. Having spent the last two and a half years in China watching the UK during this time, has been an eye-opener in many ways. In this video, I will share my observations on how the UK compares and contrasts with China, touching on aspects like governance, healthcare, technology, and social dynamics. Firstly, let's talk about the sense of regression. I'm struck by the visible changes in the UK. I remember growing up, and even though I didn't live in the biggest of cities, far from it in fact, Streets were still bustling. People, even strangers, would greet you as you walked past them. Nowadays, everywhere but London, streets that were once bustling with activity now seem to be quieter. Pretty much all shops I remember have closed down, and in their place only coffee shops and banks remain. And there seems to be a general feeling from friends and family of things moving backwards. Obviously, that is a stark contrast to how things are in China. The pace of development is palpable. New buildings, businesses and technologies are emerging rapidly. We could probably hypothesize a few reasons for this. For me personally, I think it ultimately boils down to governance, which brings me to my next point. In terms of governance, the UK's political scene has been tumultuous, to, to say the least. We've seen a series of prime ministers come and go in a very short span, each bringing their own policies and visions, but none staying or surviving long enough to be able to see these policies through. This instability contrasts with China's more stable, though admittedly different, political system. In China, long-term planning and continuity are evident in their approach to development and international relations. Say what you want in the comments, I know there will be at least 100 people saying nonsense like, oh, the CCP paid you to say that, which is pretty ridiculous and makes you sound very unintelligent, but I think every reasonable person can see the truth in what I am saying. The UK's governance, and to an extent that of most democracies around the world, is pretty dire. How can we effectively develop as a country and as a population if we are changing leader every year and a half? If wages and salaries aren't growing? If house prices are unaffordable for 80% of people? If food and energy prices are astronomical? Disclaimer, obviously I love my country, I just don't like the direction it's currently heading in. A direction which brings me to my next point. The UK's standing on the global stage. Which seems to be shifting. Post-Brexit, there's a sense of searching for a new identity, a new role in the global arena, like we don't know who we are anymore. We're no longer one of the key decision makers in one of the world's largest trading blocks. 52% of us were lobbied and persuaded to our detriment to leave the EU and forge our own path. Unfortunately, seven years on, this doesn't seem to have gone too well. Meanwhile, China's influence is growing. Whether it's in economics, technology, diplomacy, China is increasingly asserting itself as a global leader, reshaping the balance of power. Economically, the difference between our two countries is stark. Now, I know that there is a difference between the UK and, the, and China in terms of population size, country size, that sort of thing. But in the UK, wages haven't kept up with the cost of living. People are feeling the pinch. 
struggling with rising prices and stagnant incomes. People can't afford to put food on the table. They have very little disposable income, if any at all. In contrast, China's economic boom has elevated living standards. The middle class is getting bigger. An incredible amount of people have been lifted out of poverty. Salaries are increasing and there's a growing number of people experiencing a lifestyle that wasn't possible literally just a generation ago. Healthcare is another area where the differences are profound. The NHS, once the pride of the UK, is grappling with long wait times and resource shortages. And it's not just been the last couple of years that it's been like this, it's been like this for as long as I can remember. Speak to anyone in the UK and they will tell you that it's increasingly harder to see a doctor if you have any issue with your body. You will be waiting months to be seen and that is not an exaggeration. In contrast, speaking again from my personal experience, China has invested heavily in its healthcare infrastructure to the point where I needed an appointment the other day. I went to a public hospital and I got a ticket at 8am. I was seen within 30 minutes and my problem was solved by the end of the day. The efficiency of services and accessibility compared to the UK is pretty eye-opening. I heard somewhere that the UK pays around a quarter of all taxes towards the NHS. And I think we need to start asking ourselves, is the NHS being run effectively if we are paying so much and receiving so little? Technologically, the UK also seems to have hit a plateau. We used to be great innovators, we were the kings of the industrial revolution, and while there are innovations, the pace is obviously much slower compared to China, where technology is advancing at an incredible rate. From AI to EVs to green tech to microchips, China is not just catching up anymore, but often leading the way in many sectors. The global economic landscape is also changing. China's rise as a major economic player is reshaping global trade and investment patterns. The UK, meanwhile, is navigating this new environment, not really sure what to do, where to go, trying to find its footing in a world where traditional economic powers are no longer the only dominant forces. Finally, let's talk about social dynamics. This is a controversial topic to say the least. The UK is becoming increasingly diverse, with a rich tapestry of cultures and communities. This diversity may be a strength, but it also presents challenges. Let's not be naive. There were 750,000 people confirmed, that's not a random number, but 750,000 people confirmed migrating to the UK last year. And whilst my view is that it is morally the right thing to do to allow people escaping war-torn areas to settle in safe countries. This number raises a question mark as to the effectiveness of social cohesion and integration. It's difficult for a country of any size to take in 750,000 people with diverse backgrounds, religious, be religious beliefs and cultures in just one year. Compared to China's more homogenous society, the UK's multicultural landscape requires a nuanced approach to ensure that everyone feels included and represented. These are just some of my observations after living in China for two and a half years. I can kind of see the UK from a different angle now that I am outside looking in as opposed to being there. It's a complex and multifaceted comparison and I'm keen to hear your thoughts and experiences. Do you agree with my observations or do you see things differently? If you found this video informative or enjoyed it, please engage with it by dropping a like or a comment. It helps to boost the video and get more people's perspectives, which I think is great. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.